What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Paddock, and today we're gonna talk about the three big mistakes that new improvisers make. <laughs> Teaching beginner and intermediate improv is one of my absolute favorite things to teach. And the reason for that is because in a relatively short period of time, you can see a huge amount of progress, especially if the student is learning in a step-by-step -step fashion. So when a student comes in uh, and I ask them if they can improvise, oftentimes they'll say yes, but they don't really know how. And I say, play me something, improvise something. And this is what it usually sounds like. The good news is when they play something like that, they're actually making something up from scratch, which means they're improvising. But the bad news is what they're making up doesn't really make a lot of sense. And oftentimes it's because of these three big mistakes. So let's break this down and figure out how to make it sound a whole lot better. So the first big mistake that new improvisers make is they are not playing in a tonal center. We call it a tonal center instead of a scale because oftentimes you have several chords that are all working together around one key signature or tonal center. So that is the term that we usually talk about when we're talking about what notes to play and what scales to play uh, over a specific song or a set of chord changes. So that's a little bit more music theory than we need just to figure this part out. So when you first start improvising, you don't wanna play random notes. You wanna pick notes from a specific scale. As saxophone players, we love the G major scale, so that is a great starting point. So when you go to improvise, instead of just playing random notes, you wanna play notes that are in your G major scale. So your G major scale sounds like this. So if I improvise using notes in that scale, it's all gonna make sense because those notes are working together. That was almost a scale that I was kind of snaking through a little bit to make it sound more like improv, but you could hear how those notes work together. They're not random. Now, when you're talking about a scale, you have four notes that are more important than the other notes, and those are your chord tones, the first, third, fifth, and seventh, and in the key of G, that would be G, B, D, and F sharp. So when you're improvising using a tonal center or the scale in one of your tonal centers, you wanna bring out your chord tones in that scale. It's gonna make it sound a whole lot better. Now when I say bring out one of the chord tones, I just mean make that the more important note, the note that you're gonna land on, the note that you're gonna transition from. Just think about those as your strong notes. So step one is make sure that you are not playing random notes. Play notes that are in a scale or in a tonal center. The second big mistake that students make when they are learning how to improvise is they play long notes or notes that don't have any movement. So it'll sound like this. All of those notes work together, everything sounds fine, but there's no movement in what I just played. And the reason for that is because I was mainly playing long notes, half notes and whole notes. And when you start off improvising, you don't wanna be playing a lot of long notes. You want movement in your improv lines. And the easiest way to do that is to think of eighth notes being your main ingredient. Now, when I say main ingredient, I don't mean you can only use eighth notes. I just mean you should use mostly eighth notes and then some quarter notes and some longer notes. If you do that, you're gonna have a lot more movement in your improvised lines. That sounds way better because there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement because I am using mainly eighth notes. If I do the same kind of idea with quarter notes, It just doesn't work because everything is just sitting there and nothing is moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
If you are watching this video, then I'm guessing you'd like to get a whole lot better at improvisation. If that is the case, then I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. Inside the Sax School, I have improv courses that start with single note improv and work step by step all the way into improvising over complex chord changes. So if you'd like to take a huge step forward in your improv journey, check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. I'll put a link in the video description below. Now, we're using the correct notes because we have a tonal center. We have movement in the line because we're using eighth notes as the main ingredient. The third big mistake that new improvisers make is that they don't play in complete phrases. So they'll play something that sounds like this. Those were all the right notes. They were all in the G major scale. I was bringing out my chord tones, G, B, D, and F sharp, and I was using eighth notes, but it still didn't quite sound right. And the reason for that is because it was one big, long, run-on sentence. I was just playing a whole bunch of notes that never ended. So when you're improvising, you wanna speak or play in sentences. In music, your sentence is a phrase, and the easiest and most common phrase is a two-bar phrase. So if you start your improv thinking in two bar phrases, everything you play is going to make sense. Two bars. Two bars. When I play like that, everything makes musical sense because I'm speaking in musical sentences. So now I'm going to put some two bar phrases back to back. One, two, three. That makes a lot more musical sense and it sounds so much better. Now, you don't wanna only play in two bar phrases, but in the beginning, that is what you wanna think, two bar phrases. Once you get really comfortable with that, you're gonna be able to stretch it out and make it so that it's not so predictable that you are playing in two bar phrases every time. You'll be able to stretch it out into four bars or three bars or two and a half. But in the beginning, if you think two bar phrases, everything that you play is gonna sound a whole lot better because you're gonna be playing it in a musical sentence. So if you wanna avoid the three big mistakes that new and early improvisers make, then you wanna make sure that you are playing in a tonal center, thinking about a specific scale, that you have moving notes. So thinking about eighth notes as your main ingredient and that you are improvising using musical sentences. And the way to do that is to think in two bar phrases. If you do all of that, you'll be well on your way in your improv journey. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, then I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. Uh -huh.